Welcome back to Righteously Redeemed. All right, so I'm Autumny, and I am getting the pure joy and opportunity to share my Bible study that I wrote, and we're on chapter two. So um, chapter one is recorded. If you haven't gotten the Bible study, you can get it on all platforms. It's at Barnes and Noble, it's on Amazon. Um, you could just reach out to me, I can get you a copy. Um, you can do it with a group of ladies or, um, I know it's, I don't know if any guys would do it, but maybe like your sister or your mom or your aunt or your grandmother. Um, or you could just do it by yourself. The book is so small. It fits anywhere. Um, and you can do it, you know, at lunch. Each day is so short. It doesn't take long, but it's amazing how just three to five minutes just to kind of reflect on some really great questions I have in here for you. And um, there's also a song, a praise and worship song for every single day. So you can listen to and maybe learn a new song that you haven't heard yet. So um, let's get right into this. All right, so for chapter two, uh, if you are leading the group, which I've mentioned before, you can be a leader. Um, even if you do it once and then you want to get some girls together and do it together, um, you can do that. You are more capable than you realize. So don't, don't dismiss small beginnings, right? Um, all right, so what are you thankful for? And then it always goes into prayer requests. Uh, it makes a big difference when you can really emphasize your gratefulness and the things you're thankful for. I'm going to share mine uh, for today especially. Um, I said I'm thankful for my hair. Um, I have really big curly hair. Sometimes I don't know what to do with it. Sometimes I don't know how to tame it. Um, <laughs> but I'm thankful for it. I'm really thankful for my hair. I have sweet friends, time off, resting, um, weekends, extended breaks. I'm a teacher so um, those are always so appreciated. And um, just having friends who become family and God's protection. I I just know that God has protected me from so many things and I just praise him for that and I'm thankful. So uh, I know thankfuls can kind of come hard for people at times, especially if you're in a frustrating season, um, but there's always something to be thankful for. The smallest thing, you can find it. I know you can. And then prayer request. So. Um, I'm going to go into day one, and I've referenced another verse at the beginning, and there are coloring pages, and I have my colors too, so uh, you can color and, you know, just play one of the songs that I have listed, and just kind of take a moment to yourself. So the first verse is uh, 1 John um, chapter 5, verse 14, it says, this is the confidence we have in approaching God that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. I love this verse. It reminds me of Mark 11, 24. That talks about whatever you believe in and whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. But don't forget verse 25 because verse 25 also says that you need to be forgiving anybody if you have a grievance, a frustration, just like how the Lord has forgiven you. So those two verses do go hand in hand, side note. but. Let's stay on topic. All right, so I love that. If you ask for anything according to his will, he hears you. Ephesians chapter two, verses one through two. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world. Oof, the ways of this world. I mean, honestly, I have to catch myself so much when I'm on social media because the world be looking good. The world is enticing and I'm like, is it the world that I'm following it or is it the word that I'm following, right? It's kind of interesting how world and world are so closely spelled and they sound so similar, but they lead different paths of life. And the ruler of the kingdom of the air and the spirit who is now at work and those who are disobedient. So the first question I have on here is, what is one thing you used to do but have stopped doing? And I think this is such a powerful question because if there are things that you are still doing that you need to stop doing and you keep saying you need to stop doing, 
this is a perfect time. Work on stop doing them. If you think to yourself, gosh, I don't think I've stopped doing anything. Well, that means that you're not growing. You're not changing. You're not developing. We have to constantly be growing in something getting better at something, bettering ourselves for the kingdom of God, especially if you're spending time with the Lord, if you're around other believers, if you're plugged into church. I mean, your walk should be transforming and sooner or later people will see it. Um, so what's one thing that you've stopped doing? You used to do what you stopped doing. Well, I can tell you right now, one thing I used to do and I stopped doing was I don't go to the club, I don't go out to the bars. Um, I have a few friends that, you know, they'll go out for like their birthday or something, but and I never really was a big partier anyways, but like I have zero, zero desire to do any of that. Um, something else I stopped doing that I used to do was the way I dated. I've dated completely different now. The way I date, the way I desire to be pursued. I mean, that's even changed in the last couple of years, what I'm tolerating, what I'll accept. Um, to just know once you know the value of you, you don't really settle for anything less than that. And it's hard to think, I have value? Like, I have worth? Yes, yes, daughter of God, you have value. Yes, daughter of God, you have worth. And you should be pursued, you should be sought after. And it's not a bare minimum, you're not the crumb. You're the whole meal, you're the whole thing. And if you don't feel like that, I want to encourage you to be able to spend time with the Lord and reflect on the areas that maybe you want to better yourself in so that you can start to see yourself how, how God does. Um, the next question I have is what is one thing you want to stop doing but have not stopped doing yet? Hmm. All right, I'll be a little transparent here. Um, one of the things that I have not stopped doing, but I want to start doing is my words. Okay, so what in my words? Well, my words, when I get frustrated, my words can become a little colorful. Um, yes, they can. Not saying it's bad, but it's just not attractive. And I know it's not attractive. I don't think it's attractive. The Lord is working on me on that. Um, oh, something else I stopped doing was like dancing at the club. Okay, okay, okay. So that used to be something I loved. I still love to dance, but definitely in a different context. Um, realizing kind of how I was portraying my body and myself to random people, um, it just didn't feel good and I didn't feel like I was representing the Lord in the best light. But back to something I haven't stopped doing yet is my words. Um, when I get frustrated, even like words against myself, I still, every like day, I have to like, catch my words to say, I'm not going to speak negatively about my body or about how I look. That comes so easy for me, this negative self-talk. I mean, I can just rip myself a new one and I'm like, why do I do this? Um, something I'm still working through. If you've mastered it, I am so proud of you because our words do have power of life and death. And that is me being able to tame my tongue, which is part of self-discipline, part of the fruits of the spirit. And I mean, it's a constant, it's a constant thing. It's a constant work. So, um, this is a prayer. I'm going to pray it out loud. I have it listed and, um, I hope you just join me for the end of chapter or chapter two, day one. <sighs> um, here we go. Ask God to help you in this area, whatever it is. Tell him you need his help to overcome the struggle in attachment to the world and no longer want to feed your fleshly desires anymore. Transformation does not come overnight or in a single day. Many of our habits have been built over years of living and being in this world. As you recognize our acceptance, as we recognize our acceptance and freedom in Christ Jesus, our lives begin to change, including the way we think and act. Amen. So I just want continue to encourage you that we're never fully complete. We've never mastered this world. We've never mastered everything. The tongue is the hardest thing to master. I mean, it's so, it can be so violent and hurtful. Um, the song I have right here is called Ask by Love and the Outcome. Jesus is our redemption. And there's a little coloring page that you can do. 
All right. Day two. Okay, day two. Ephesians chapter two, verses four through five. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in our transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. Ooh, there's that grace word again. All right, I'm going to put in a plug right there. So um, we do have our third conference this summer. Um, all the details will be announced close to the end of April, beginning of May. Um, super, super exciting. So as you continue on with the Bible study with us, you'll get little snippets and information um, to know to come. It's by grace you have been saved. We used to live in sin, not knowing, not even knowing what we did was sinful. But once we entered the body of Christ and began to learn his character and word, our passions and desires start to change. The best and sweetest part of this is God's mercy and grace that covers us and blesses us while forgiving us. It's a lot of us. Mm. Well, it's you and me. And not giving us the punishment of death that we deserve. Jesus is our redemption. We're saved by grace and grace alone. By God's grace. It was like maybe four years ago, you know, there were some things, I went through a, a program, which I've mentioned before, um, called Regeneration, and it just talked about being able to confess your sins, and sometimes there are things in our lives that people have different convictions. And if you have a conviction on something and somebody else does it, doesn't mean you can put that conviction on them. You don't guilt them. There's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. So you don't make them feel bad for what they're doing. You love them through it. And um, actually one of my pastors, Pastor Manny, I loved this. Um, he said that every time he messed up in his sexual sin, um, he would have to call his friend. He would as accountability. And every time he called his friend, he would say, you are the righteousness of Christ Jesus. You are the righteousness of Christ Jesus. I think righteously redeemed, you know, I, I, that just really stuck out to me. And every time he called, he was like, dude, I'm messing up. Like, why do you keep telling me this? And he says, because every time you confess your sin, I have to confess who you are. And you are the righteousness in Christ Jesus. You have been made new. You are covered by God's grace, even when you mess up. And you may mess up multiple times, but God continues to forgive us. And until you even have the level of conviction of the things that maybe you're doing that are or are not maybe godly-like, um, don't beat yourself up about that either. Just know that God loves you right where you are and he receives you for who you are and the transformation will change. It will happen. It may take time, but it will. All right. Um, and the last verse I have there is um, 1 John chapter 4, verse 10. This is real love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. And the question is, what does sacrifice mean to you? That's a good place to stop and just really think about what does sacrifice mean to you? What can you sacrifice? What are you willing to sacrifice? What are you willing to give up to become closer to the Lord and to be more like him? The song I have for you today is Grace Redeemed. It's really good. It's a really good song. All right. Okie dokie, on to day three. We're just moving right along. I told you, they're not long. They're not long at all. All right, Ephesians chapter two. <sighs> For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is a gift of God, not by work, so that no one can boast. I love that. Write down how you would describe faith to someone. How would you describe faith? What does faith look like? What does faith sound like? How do you exemplify faith in your everyday walk of life? In Hebrews 11.1, 1, it tells us, you know, faith is the evidence of things not seen. You know, we hope for them. 
we hope for these things. We can't see them, but we have to have faith for them. Like, I hope and I believe that someday Jesus Christ will come back. I can't see him physically, but I have hope, which gives me that faith to know he is true. Faith is a substance of things not seen, but we're still hoping for them. Um, how do you show your faith in action? Something I like to do with my faith in action is just continue to declare the things that are good over myself even when I don't feel it. That's honestly faith for me because there are moments where I don't feel righteous or holy or pure or kind or gentle or loving. I mean, I really, really, I mean, come on. But when I can start to say like, I am kind, I am sweet, I am loving, I'm forgiving, I'm proactive, you know, that's just one thing that I know the Lord didn't call, call me to be lazy. He's called me to many things and lazy is not one of them. So I'm going to be proactive. Um, you know, just a gentleness, a sweetness. Sometimes I don't feel that way. Sometimes I feel harsh, you know, and mean. And it's like, that's not what God says about me. So if I have faith to believe who God's called me to be, even though I don't see it, that's me walking by faith. I'm gonna have a great day today. I may not see the great day, may not feel like a great day, but I have faith that God can make it great. And it's not like false positivity either. That's not what I'm saying. That's not how I'm thinking. It's definitely, it's a faith. It's a faith walk. It's saying, I know that today is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. What is something you are really good at and would it be willing to help someone grow in that area? So that kind of just goes back to, um, you know, you have a gift from God and you have things that only you can do. And what's really cool is that sure it may look like somebody else's or it may be similar to somebody else's, but you are not that somebody else. God knit you together in your mother's womb. He has so many perfect little details about you that he wants to use and um recently uh, gosh like three days in a row somebody was like how many jobs do you have i was like huh i started counting them and i think it was like five or six but it's because these opportunities have presented themselves to me and i've been able to grow and learn um and just develop more gifts that i didn't even realize i had um, sometimes God will be able to give you opportunities to explore a gift that he's placed in you that you would have had no idea. I like this analogy. I thought of this years ago in one of my videos. Um, and it's like under the Christmas tree, there's all these big gifts. Okay. And everybody sees the big gifts. And big gifts are great. But sometimes there's a really small gift and it kind of goes unnoticed. It may not be seen at first, but oh my gosh, if you open that gift, that tiny little box, women, we know where we're going with this. There's a tiny little box under the Christmas tree waiting for you. It could be a huge gift and that gift could be a ring and that ring could be a ring to symbolize, to symbolize a relationship, a covenant to come, um, years of marriage. That's a huge gift. And it didn't look big. You didn't notice it at first. And I just wanna encourage you, like there might be little gifts inside you that you haven't even explored yet and you don't know how big they could become. You have no idea what God has put in you open that little gift don't don't dismiss it because it could be bigger than you realize it really could all right and our salvation is a gift all righty now we are on chapter four moving right along okay so chapter four covers a uh, super, super well-known and definitely favorite verse by many. And if you've never heard it, well, you're in luck. So Ephesians chapter two, verse 10 says, for we are God's masterpiece. That means you are a masterpiece. 
He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Masterpiece definition is a work of outstanding artistry, skill, or workmanship. You. It's basically you. You are a masterpiece. It can be really hard to believe or even view yourself as a masterpiece. Someone who is defined as outstanding. Do you view yourself as outstanding? God does. He views you as perfect, redeemed, and good. In fact, the Bible tells us every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord. You came from Him. He is your creator. And then there's a little page that you can color. Um, I like love this one so much. And when I just think about, I mean, I'm even gonna, sometimes I like to just kind of pause and just remind myself too, like my creator thinks I'm outstanding because he's a perfect God. He makes no mistakes and he sees you he sees me as outstanding and it's not by our grades it's not by what our body looks like or the clothes or the size that we wear just us just us as people the broken flawed people we are but in his eyes as we're accepted into his family he sees us as outstanding. You should just tell yourself that. I'm outstanding. Because sometimes it doesn't feel that way. But that's faith. Believe it before you see it. Because other people might see the outstanding qualities in you before you do. I love this page. Page 36. List five good things about yourself. I know that's hard. I know that's hard, but you can do it. You can do it. There are five good things about you. There's more than five good things, but we're starting small. And the song that I put for today has encouraged me in so many moments of my own life, and it's called Royalty by Tasha Cobbs. I love this song. I love it. I love it. I love it. If you haven't heard it, I bet you're going to love it too. Okay. Day five. Here we are at the end of chapter two. All right. Before Jesus Christ, the Jews believed and some still believe that they are the chosen ones, meaning the only ones going to heaven and currently waiting for their savior who they do not believe is Jesus Christ. If you are not a Jew, then you are considered a Gentile. If um, I'm a Gentile and you are a Gentile, if you're not a Jew. Jesus Christ, however, paved the way for both Jews and Gentiles to come to him and receive eternal life and a home in heaven. No more separation, no more exclusion. You are accepted by Jesus. Make a list of all the different groups, all the different people groups, blacks, Whites are just a few examples. All the different groups that you even identify with in yourself. There's so many groups of people, so many ways that people identify themselves nowadays. Oh my gosh. I could go into that, but there's just so many, so many different opportunities, extracurriculars, interests, um, pronouns that people are now going by. And those are different groups and what people accept and don't accept or what people like or people don't like. So just make your list and recognize that right here it says, so you see it. It does not matter your gender, your race, your color, your origin, your political background, your career, your economic status, your bank account, or your family history. You have been accepted through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He is the forgiveness of our sins. He's, he forgives them, the forgiver, the forgiveness. He is our saving grace. Ooh, there's that grace word again. Our conference coming up this summer. He is our ride or die. 
You're accepted. Doesn't matter any of those things. I love that because there are so many groups that will say, no, you can't join us. You can't join us because you don't look a certain way or you don't act a certain way. Granted, remember back in chapter one, we talked about rejection and how you can perceive rejection. Once you realize that you're not supposed to be accepted into every group, you can have peace and freedom because you're accepted with Christ. He's the group you want to be a part of. He's the family. He's the team. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 13 through 16 are listed all the way through here. Um, and then it says, Jesus came so that there may be peace between and within his creation. I'll read that part again. It says that Jesus came so that there can be peace between within his creation and his children because we have so much warfare and anger and disagreements and God wants people to be at peace with one another if it is all possible is that peace with everybody his creation his children who have accepted who have accepted him and welcomed him into their lives and hearts and directs their actions for he himself is our peace he is called the Prince of peace. So this last little bit of chapter uh, chapter 2, day 5, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 22 through 21. I'm going to read this to you. In him the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. You are part, part of the body of Christ. How can you contribute to grow God's kingdom and reflect his peace towards others? You can forgive. Just forgive. Forgive, forgive, forgive. Because the way that the Lord shows his peace towards others was when he was on the cross. He said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And through three in one, the Trinity, Jesus Christ was able to forgive them too. And when we can say, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing, we cast off our having to control the understanding or the meaning and give the person grace to say, you don't even know what you've done to me. You don't even know the pain you just brought me. But through Jesus Christ, I can forgive you. Through Christ and Christ alone. You can forgive and that's showing peace. You're keeping the peace. You can be in uproar. You can be in anger. You can hold that bitterness or that anger, that resentment. You can go bash them to other people. Or you can say, Father, forgive them. Release them to him because he loves them so much. He loves them still. And the song for um, day five is You Are Holy. I love this song because I learned this song when I was in middle school, I think it was, early elementary. It says, you are holy, you are my prince of peace, and I will live my life for you. You are my prince of peace, and I will live my life for you. And I just love to meditate on knowing that he is my prince of peace, and I live my life for him. You are my Prince of Peace, and I will live my life for you. Live in peace. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right, guys. Until next week, chapter three. Can't wait to see you. Bye.